Make sure to add size 2 and 1 to the battery rack. Then turn it on. Once turned on, it will display the battery voltage. This is the settings button. Press it to enter the settings page. The first item is the charging cutoff voltage. If it's a lithium iron phosphate battery, the cutoff voltage is 3.65 volts. If it's a ternary lithium battery, the cutoff voltage is 4.2 volts. Press it, and the cursor will blink. Rotate left and right to adjust the cutoff voltage. Press again to confirm. The second item is the charging current. Press once, the cursor blinks and rotates, you can adjust the charging current, then press again to confirm. This charging current is set according to the battery capacity. For example, this battery has a capacity of 530. So we set it according to the manual's requirements. Set the charging current to 20% of the battery capacity. That is, 20% of 50 amp hours is 10 amps of charging. Charging. Treasure hunting current, also known as cutoff current. We usually assume it's zero. 0. 0.5 K is enough. Storage voltage is the last charging voltage in cycle mode. We can set the last charging voltage to. The full battery voltage can also be the cutoff voltage or the nominal voltage. For example, we need to charge it to 3.2 volts last time. So we set it to 3.2 volts. Fifth, the cutoff voltage for discharge. Discharge voltage. Set lithium iron phosphate battery to 2.5 volts. Trimetal, trimetal lithium battery has 2.8 volts left. We usually set the discharge current to 50% of the battery capacity. For a 50 A battery, 50% is 25A for the discharge current. Cutoff current is set to 0.01A by default. No resting time is needed, 1 to 10 minutes is fine. A cycle is charging, discharging, and recharging. Two cycles mean charge, discharge, then charge again. Regardless of cycles, it ends with charging. That's the final charge. This is the language selection, and this is the buzzer switch. Then save the settings and exit. Once you return to the main interface, it will show the charging and discharging settings. Rotate this knob to switch the mode. If we need to charge, switch to charging mode, for discharging, switch to discharging mode, and for cycling, switch to cycle mode, that's cycle 1. Rotate again. To view the last charging and discharging curves, capacity over time. The green curve represents the current graph. And the yellow curve is the voltage graph. Press this button to toggle between charging and discharging curves. Continue rotating to return to the main interface. This is the discharge equalization mode. It balances the battery and equalizes the voltage of a cell. Rotate again, and it enters single charging mode. Rotate for single discharging mode, continue for cycle mode. To measure capacity, we usually choose cycle mode. Check our charging parameters. If all is well, press the start button. It will start working. The time displayed here is the total running time, and this is the internal temperature. When it completes charging and testing, it will automatically display the results page. The buzzer will sound to indicate the test is complete. At this point, we can see its charge capacity, watt hours, time, discharge capacity, watt hours, and time. Press this button to switch to the charge and discharge curve.
Check if the curve is correct and normal. When using this machine, pay attention to how the clamp connects to the battery terminals. The large crocodile clip must have good contact with the battery terminals, maximizing the contact area. The small crocodile clip should be on the battery terminal, not on the large clip or elsewhere. This large crocodile clip carries a high current, leading to a significant voltage drop between it and the battery terminal.